Congressman Paul um, have a quorum. Okay, um, we've um, adopted the agenda. Why don't we move on to the uh, minutes? What's your pleasure? Do I have a motion? So moved, adopt the minutes. I'll Do second that. Second. It has been properly moved and second. Uh, call the roll. Howard. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Dr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, uh, thank you. We'll move to uh, item four on the agenda. Matters uh, referred from the board of directors. Um, we do not have any new items. So we'll move on to number five. Monthly uh, financial uh, report, uh, Ms. Andrews. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm gonna call your attention to page seven, if you will. With this report, we begin refinances for our new fiscal year. So we're reporting on July of 2022. That has us at 8% of our fiscal year into 8% of our fiscal year. We started off with a $70,000 net income. Of course, year to date will be the same since we're just beginning. Total revenues come in at 2.3 million against our uh, budget. It represents like 5% of our annual budget. Expenses coming in at 2.5. Again, that's about 5% of our annual budget. Pay today to our contract operator. Um, that'll be through 7 1. So, just to note, we paid them twice in June, which, uh, which is why the amount is the same for the June and July report. We did that to kind of catch up and get everything posted in the same fiscal year. Um, below that, our professional contract services, marketing, and security. We'll list out here a few of um, key players that we pay. I've also, I think two meetings ago, you guys requested for some details for a few of those. So that was the inclusion that I sent a little later on. So we have the backup for those invoices included in here as well. Going down to our penny revenue, we're still holding tight a little over 164 million. I did bill them in August for $6.5 million and that money has already come in. And that is the end of my report, unless you guys have any great questions for me. Um, Ms. Andrew, uh, you certainly do a, a great job of uh, presenting us the report. Uh, one piece that I would ask that uh, you would do so we can easily follow you. When yes, you are reporting, uh, announce the page that you're reporting on. Uh, if you do that, uh, it can help us out. Uh, quite a bit. Yes, sir. I was on page seven. Yes. Okay. Now I have a, a couple of questions. Uh -oh. On uh, page 11, you have um, dot uh, transport care uh, services. And I think um, I had asked you this before but uh, was not clear. Um, we paid them 300 and some thousand dollars. Is that correct? Where it says contract is dark, we, yes. paid, yeah, we paid that amount um, to RATP there. That's what they billed us. We don't okay. pay TCS directly. We pay um, RATP there. Okay. Do we know how they disperse that? We do not. Okay, how do we go about uh, getting that information? I could ask them. Yeah, uh, would you okay. kindly ask uh, Rep. Dad uh, to give us um, a breakdown of how they disperse that? Okay. Certainly would appreciate it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now on page 16 and 17, you have local government investment pool, uh, the same two, uh, two times. 
Well, the, not the same two times, they're different, but you have the same uh, uh, time period. Correct. We have two accounts with the local government investment pool. If you look up at the top, one account number is 2530 and the other one is 2533. Oh, okay. All right. So this is, uh, these are different accounts then? Yes. Oh, okay. On, um, okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, are there any uh, more questions we can ask uh, Ms. Andrews? Uh, just, uh, Mr. Chair, to follow up on what you just asked about, Ross, can you remind me? Um, I, I see that one says operating reserve and the other says emergency reserve. Uh -huh. I think the board directed you to do it that way. Correct. Um, can you remind me how we look at that? Is is one of them primary? I know operating would be operating. Is the other one? Remind me what we were trying to accomplish with the emergency designation. We're basically trying to secure ourselves beyond the pain. Um, okay. If it gets, yeah. For if if we collect faster than at the rate we're going, you know, if we're getting six million over six million um, a quarter from them, we will collect faster than the twenty two years. So we're right. trying to set this up to hold us until we go back. To yeah, so it's that if if memory serves, that's to help bridge a potential gap between when the funds would run out and when we go back a to possible us. referendum. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. No problem. Uh, one one final piece um, on uh, September the seventh, there was a memo. I think I received it on September 8th from uh, uh, Mr. Huggins. Um, maybe uh, Mr. Duchamp, uh, you could uh, uh, answer this. Uh, for professional services rendered as general counsel, we paid $4,000. What was that $4,000 for? So the one you're referring to, the $4,000, I think goes directly to Bird Foreman and McNair. That's a, like, I guess you would call a retainer fee. That's their monthly fee that they get, um, like a flat rate they would get even if they didn't do anything. So um, I think Bird Foreman and McNair is 4,000. I think maybe, um, um, what's the other one? Um, Coble. No, Bird Foreman, no, yeah, and, and Coble with next improvement. Well, I noticed, um, we pay our attorneys um, $300 an hour. Um, there is one attorney in your report, we pay 350. Why is it the discrepancy? And that would be a rate set by the attorneys and attorneys, I guess you would go, like Leroy get paid more than me, even though we may say do the same. Leroy is a little high on the chain, food chain than I would be. So if you had to put it that way, where that, and I hate to put name, where Franny has been there longer than Pam Baker. Maybe that's how they do their pricing structure. Oh, I see. That That's a good way of explaining it. I thought you were being paid the same as Mr. DeChamp. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so actually the rates are set by the firm. We don't set them. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I understand. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, we we finished the uh, report of Ms. Andrews. We thank her for that. We'll move on to... Uh, discussion and action, item seven. Six. Number six. Oh, I'm sorry. I omit you. Uh, I didn't do it intentionally, Dr. <laughs> okay, I believe you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Uh, item six, um, Dr. Prince. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the uh, disadvantage, the DBE update is found on pages 21 through 24 of the finance packet. Uh, as of July 31st, the company had paid approximately 39 million to vendors for DBE goals. And of this amount, approximately 9.8 million were paid to DBE firms. And this calculates at approximately 25.3% for an overall agency goal. On pages 23 through 24 of the 
uh, packet is information relevant to our contract to RATP DAO and reflects the, their payments to DBEs. And on page 23, it reflects the data from the start of the contract, <clears throat> which is July 1st, 2020, and it goes up through July 31st. And it's reflected at 22, the cumulative DBE goal is reflected at 22.5%. On page 24, it's just information again, once we uh, calculate information based on the fiscal year. So I started back to July 1st of this fiscal year. And we really don't have a calculation right now because we didn't have any payments made to RATP Dale uh, for the month of July. So that's why that, that number is, is, you don't really have a percentage right now. And I am still interacting with uh, RATP Dale regarding the um, revised contract extent uh, termination date for capital building services. And the general uh, manager informed me that they are still working with corporate uh, on that contract in terms of the, uh, I guess, the final contract date on it. So it's something that I'm continuing to pursue. Uh, that's it for my report, unless there are any questions. Um, Dr. Prince, I, I noticed that, and and maybe uh, because you didn't get the report for uh, RAPDEV is why it's not on the uh, page uh, 24, where we have, uh, M slash DBE goal percentage achieved. And then you have uh, the number sign DIB slash zero X commission. Um, is that because you you didn't get the report uh, for July? Uh, well, we have the, we have, if you look to the uh, left side, there is the dollar amount that we paid to uh, the DBE firms, just that we didn't have, we didn't make the comment, didn't make any payments to RATP day for July. So therefore, I don't have a number there. If you oh, look at the, yeah, so I didn't have anything to divide it by. So oh, okay. I didn't have all the data needed to do the calculation. So okay. we made two payments in June. So we didn't make a, the comment didn't make a payment to RATP day in July. Um, uh Mr. Champ, do you know why we didn't make the, the, pay, the payment in July? Why we made the two in June? Oh. No, uh, we didn't make a payment uh, to RAPDEV in July. Because they had the two payments that were in June. Oh, I see. The end of, for the end of the fiscal year. So okay. uh, that's why there was no payment in July. Okay. Well, then, uh, Dr. Press, we did receive the payment for July, but we can't re receive it in June. When I when I submitted the report for last month, I included two payments that we made to RATP Dale, so it was included in the last month payment. I mean, uh, report. Okay. And and it it should not have been included in this report. Uh, because I'm keeping the same data that the finance report does. Uh, so I was kind of following along what they submit. Okay. So they submitted two payments in in June. So I included the data to uh, the payments to RATP day up uh, in June for two months. So for July they didn't have a payment to RATP day up. So therefore, it's not reflected in July. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, are there any uh, more questions of uh, Dr. Prince? Uh, board members, hearing none, we'll move on to item seven. Uh, Ms. Andrew. Hello again. So in the board meeting, um, you guys asked to send back to the finance committee to revisit the option of going cashless on the buses. Um, I did not include any backups to this because I just simply want to say that I retract my thought for going cashless and push it for, further out. What I would am still going to proceed with is installing um, more ticket, vend well, installing the ticket vending machines around the area going out to more retail outlets to see if we could partner with them to give more options for um, our riders to go in and purchase passes. And 
I'm not sure if I sent it out to you guys, but just to let you be aware that Gen Fair will be retiring most of our fair boss. So with that coming out, kind of shifts my, how I have to plan us moving forward with this whole project. Okay, uh, we will have funds for new fair boxes, is that correct? I will have to get Michelle to go out and find grant money um, to replace those fair boxes. Okay. So we just got the notice shortly after the meeting, actually, that they were retiring all of those fair boxes, which is a majority of our fair box types. So we're going to have to do some fair box replacement sooner than later. Okay. Now, on the uh, cashless uh, comment, um, I understand that uh, you said we are retiring this uh, temporarily. Um, but I uh, was able to talk with some individuals and I found that, for example, in Atlanta, they uh, have the uh, cashless system, but uh, they don't give change. You can ride the bus with cash, but you have to have the exact amount. And they also uh, have brief cards. I guess that's similar to the cards we have, that uh, their bus system will read it uh, when they, um, uh, the riders uh, get on the bus. So yeah, uh, it, it probably takes some time for us to uh, research this, but I like the way that uh, you, Ms. Andrew, are moving ahead and keeping us up to date on the latest, although it may not be appropriate for us right now, but eventually I think it will. Uh, so thank you. Yeah, currently we do the same. You have to have exact change to board the bus. We don't give change back. We have what we call smart cards. Um, our smart cards are gonna need a little bit of updating as well as we change over our fare boxes. And with the change of the fare boxes, I want to see if we will have the, if we can, also implement in that the option to take debit and credit cards. Oh, okay, okay, good. So uh, presently, um, no one, uh, the drivers uh, don't take uh, cash. Uh, no, you I'll... have the exact amount and you put it in the fare box. Right, drivers are, should not take cash from any rider. Okay. All right, thank you, Ms. Andrews. Are there any questions from board members? Yes, I have uh, I have a few. Hey, so Ross, so as I understand it, and Dr. Morris hit on a good point, he actually kind of stole my thunder. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 hey, sir, it's, it's all good. So um, centrally located throughout Atlanta, right? So their MARTA system, they have kind of centrally located machines where you can go get your smart tickets or your breeze cards. Correct. Is that some is that something that we can implement? And if so, how costly would it be? Right? Because I know your initial proposal was, hey, we're gonna partner with local vendors like the grocery store. But the problem is if somebody stays way up Monticello Road, right, they don't have access to any of that. So coming from their house, they wouldn't have access to get that car, which means they wouldn't be able to ride downtown. So can we centrally locate those machines? Right, that's what I mentioned. The ticket vending machines that I mentioned, putting that uh -huh. out larger super stops, putting them in some of the um, some of our retail vendors, uh, and I say starting there with seeing how that works, and then order more to put out and about in the town. So I don't want to go and put a, a bunch of them, and you know, I guess where I say sporadically in places, but that is the plan. It won't okay. be some at every bus stop. But trying to find, like you say, from Monticello Road, the best place to put one so they can go out and get them. Even if there's a gas station that we can go out and say, hey, can we put a small machine here where people can come in and feed the machine or pay you to get a pass? Okay. Okay. And then, and then uh, I guess you just briefly spoke about it. Either you or Dr. Morris, you mentioned being able to accept debit cards. So I'm assuming the kind of new direction is, hey, even with the smart car, in addition to that, if I don't get a smart car, I can just swipe my debit card because we have to update fare boxes anyway, correct? 
Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's all I had. I just wanted to make sure that I was understanding what we were discussing here. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Larson. Um, are there any more questions? Okay. We will move on. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Andrews. You move on to uh, item number eight. There are any uh, legal contracts, your person there, a matter we need to discuss? I see none. So before we move on, uh, I don't know the protocol, but Mr. The Champ, you probably can help me out here. Uh, could we put on our agenda? Um, comments, because uh, there may be a time we want to uh, mention some other things, or we have to be specific in terms of, of what we are talking about, uh, Mrs. Mr. DeChamp. Uh, just thought, would it be like, other than what we have under discussion action items, other than that? Well, uh, or, or are you talking someone from the public or? No, no, I'm talking about uh, board members. For example, uh, I, we received a well-documented uh, report from uh, Ms. Andrews on uh, the consultant. But um, I don't know, although I, I received, I see uh, she gave the financial piece but I don't know exactly what these consultants do. Where would I get that information from? That was okay. Uh, you know, I, if you need more detail, we can provide that because, you know, we would have a contract, a scope of work, uh, things like that, if you need additional uh, detail. I would like to see uh, additional uh, details on these consultants. Um, I know it's 23 of them, I think. Uh, I, I think all board members should be aware of what we are spending um, taxpayers' money for. Because if you take a look. So at, in addition to the description, I'm sorry, you finished? I'm sorry. And if you take a look at uh, paid year uh, to date, um, you know, there, there, there's quite a bit. And uh, I am always cautious of spending taxpayers' money, uh, whether it's necessary. So we need to know what these consultants are doing. So in addition to the report that you got, I, I know there was a description column. You just want it to be a, a more detailed there? Yes, more detail, uh, please. That would, that would, yes. that would uh, help out. Hey. Uh, I guess question, uh, Dr. Morris or whoever can answer. Are we past the motions period? Because um, I, I think it's appropriate now that we have this information. Obviously, we're discussing it here in our committee, but it needs to be referred over to the full board, obviously, and the full board needs to make a vote on um, the necessity of each of these consultants. So if need be, I can make a motion for that. Uh, would you? Dr. Morris, yeah. just a second. So, Chris, yes. to what you said, yes. Dr. Morris, that report that you're referring to, you asked that it go directly to the board. So that's what the report went to. But in that report, there was a column that said description, and the description gave a snippet of what they do for us. So the report is not here. We currently don't have a discussion, I guess, a motion period on the agenda. I think that's what Dr. Morris is asking for. I can put it on there, motion and comment right. section. And... Um, to satisfy what Dr. Morris wants, but Chris, to you, that report is not in this packet, and it did go directly to the board packet per Dr. Morris' request. Oh no, I understand. I'm I'm looking at what you sent out, but uh, can can you add that retroactively to this packet, and then we can make a motion because it's not a motion period. I guess I'm confused on why it would need to be a motion if it's already in their packet. It'll be already hey, so in the board packet. Got it. Okay. Understood. Understood. My apologies. No okay. Is this, uh, this So this is in the board package, so it will be on the board agenda? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. All okay. right. Well, and that would cover it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Are uh, you satisfied with that, uh, Ms. Lawson? 
Yes, sir, I am. That's perfect. Okay, good. Um, the next item is uh, number nine, item to uh, adjourn. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, if I may, before we do that, it's a real quick comment on the last topic. Um, yes. I do think that if we get into a deeper dive into the consultants, um, I, I'm not averse to discussing it at the board level, but I do think this committee might be the appropriate place to really have, if, if, if the goal is to have an in-depth discussion, it seems like it ought to start here, but, but I'm, not, I'm not suggesting that we do anything different than what we currently have planned for the next board meeting, but I'm just saying, um, you know, that just as a, as a matter of procedure, um, generally something this in depth would probably either be referred to the committee or originate in the committee. But that's just a comment. I'm not suggesting we do anything different than what we currently have planned for next board meeting. Um, now, uh, it seems to be uh, caught, caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, <laughs> could, 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 Mr. Lawson, uh, could we go into executive session at our next uh, finance meeting and discuss uh, the description more? Or, or you prefer I mean, going directly to, to the board? Hey, and hey Dr. Morris. I, I just I'm sorry, go ahead, Andy. I'm sorry. And I, I was just going to say, I'm fine either way. I'm just not sure that the full board, you know, with respect to its resources and its time, that that's the effective use of its time. But I, I'm I'm fine. It's on the agenda for the next board meeting, and you know I think we should proceed with the way. I just think in general, um, if there is a something that's that in depth where we're asking for you know that level of specificity, you know the the committee is the appropriate place for it, but. Hey, Dr. Morris, so I, I'm not opposed to what Andy's proposing. I think it's a great idea, actually. And if we have the time, uh, I think that we should, as a committee, go through and then make recommendations. If I'm understanding you, Andy, we make recommendations to the board on what we um, decided to keep and decided that it was no longer a necessity. Is that what you're proposing, Andy? Well, yeah. I mean, I think just to have that kind of in-depth discussion should probably be at the committee level. I think as an analogy, there's a lot of stuff that happens at the service committee that um, I'm not as in tune to. Uh, and I always appreciate their in-depth review and then their their response back to the full board. And I know when, if something that they typically deal with comes to the full board, I'm usually not right. prepared to talk about it. Fair enough. So is this something that can be addressed today? Do we have the time to address it today? I think it's not explicitly agendized. That's why I think in this case, I don't have a problem with it going, you know, with our having the discussion at the board. I'm just making a more broader comment that going forward, something this at this level. Uh, hey, so, so Dr. Uh, uh, Mr. DeChamps, I guess even though this is not agendized, uh, we're not actually taking action. We're just giving a recommendation or uh, having an open discussion. So can we, within the constraints of procedures, have this discussion? Uh, Ms. Mr. What, Lawson, I think we can, but I don't think uh, staff is prepared to uh, uh, give us the type of information I would be looking for. You know, I, I think they need to go out and do some research in terms of uh, getting a better uh, understanding of the description that uh, they gave us. Okay. I also will comment that if we did need to go in, into executive session, which I think we probably should with this, as the, there are contractual matters related to it, we don't have that agenda agendized. So, I, you know, I. I, uh, I Mr. Chair. Um, I have a uh, yes. Do would you want in light of this conversation? Would you want um, the information to be deferred to the next board meeting after this one, so that the finance committee can meet and do a deeper dive into this before it goes to the board? Mm -mm. So, so can I make a recommendation? 
we yes. as the finance committee should call an emergency meeting um, whenever it, we see fit and, and it works for everybody's schedule to have this discussion to ensure that it's agendized so we do not kick this can down the road to the next four after the next board meeting. I think the board needs to make a decision the next board meeting on necessities and everything that is not. Uh, I, I think that's a good point. Uh, Mr. Smith, you may know, I don't know. Uh, can the finance committee uh, recommend uh, this uh, as an agenda item uh, for our next committee meeting? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we could put anything on the agenda um, with enough notice. And, and um, you know, I can't remember the exact rules, but typically, you know, the chair working with the with staff puts together the the agenda. Um, so, yeah, this could be put on the next the next committee agenda or a special call meeting as well. Um, I think that would be probably speaking here, not as an attorney, but just sort of a, um, I think that would be the, the more appropriate thing than to try to have a conversation here without it explicitly on the agenda. Um, I think that it's implied in some of the finance report stuff. So we could we could talk about vendors in the finance report section and we could go back to, the, to that section, but I don't think we could get into um, details of like contracts or anything like that. It well, would be- Why don't we have a, a special called um, executive committee meeting? Uh, maybe next Absolutely. week, one day? Did you want finance or executive? What do you think? What do you think? I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Smith, I didn't hear you. I think I heard you say executive committee. Did you mean finance? I mean finance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that broadly would work for me. Um, sometime early next week should be fine. OK. Uh, Mr. Lawson, that, uh, I think you alluded to that. So would that be appropriate uh, for you? Or for hey, us? Yes, sir. I, I, I just need notice. I'll make sure that I make it work because uh, this, this is an important matter. So I just need to know when and I'll make it work. OK. Um, how about next Tuesday? Uh, I'm not, not, Monday's not good for me. I'm OK with that if, if Andy's good. Yeah, that's fine as long as we've got enough notice. And uh, I would I would recommend that we consult with um, you know, Pam about how to structure the agenda. Okay, uh, we can do that. I can do that. And uh, so 10 o'clock next Tuesday? Yes, sir, that's fine with me. Okay, uh, and then uh, Ms. Bunner-Reed, you know that we would have to... Um, uh, publicizes. So uh, we'll follow protocol uh, with this next uh, Tuesday at 10. And uh, Mr. Deschamps, I would hope that uh, we could have a, a better description or you could get individuals to the meeting who could uh, answer any questions that we may have. And yeah, I, I wanted to refer in your packet for example, where we provided some invoice and more detail on some contractors, uh, we could do that possibly for each contract. Is that what you're looking for? Because it atomized what they're doing each month. Yeah, well, each one we want to talk about, but just be prepared, uh, uh, you know, for our next meeting uh, when we have a question. So Dr. Morris, just so I'm clear, because I'm the one to create the agenda for the special call coming up next Tuesday. The only thing we'll be discussing in ex and it'll be in executive session will be this um, report that I sent out to you guys. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. 
that's my understanding, uh, unless another board member have something else they would like to add. No, no, Dr. Morrison Raj, that's correct. Everything's dedicated, okay. all the resources are dedicated to that. Okay. okay. My comment would be that we, we um, yeah, I mean, if it's appropriate, and this is where I think we need some guidance, we would just go into executive session. Um, that would be the only item on the agenda and it would be executive session. We wouldn't take any action, but we would discuss and come out, you know, if there were a particular, if there were a potential recommendation to the full board or something. That's correct. Okay, uh, any more questions on this? Well, I thank you uh, very much staff and board members and uh, we will meet on next Tuesday at 10 unless uh, legal advise us not to. Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second. Have a great day, everybody. Okay. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait.